here, and I am so excited to get to talk about my favorite show of 2020 here today as we are about to talk about the finale, an entire season, hashtag spoiler alert for two hot to handle and what a great panel of falafel girls and boys that we have for you today to talk about everything from the entire season of too hot to handle let me start off with a woman who has been talking about it all week long i've so enjoyed the coverage and so happy to have her with us to talk about episodes seven and eight here's kirsten mckinnis Hi, Rob. I'm I'm glad people have enjoyed it. This week has been uh, very filled with with too hot to handle, and I, I'm happy about it. But I must admit, I'm a little glad that it's going to end. <laughs> You're glad. You're I'm glad. glad okay. I'm glad it's over. We, you know, we enjoyed the the journey, and we will always have it's too hot to handle. <laughs> We'll always have Too Hot to Handle season one. Uh, we can't wait to talk about everything. I've watched so much of this show in the last like 48 hours. So um, all I, I am like the person who I'm like one of the contestants where I've been uh, not able to podcast about it. And I'm ready to burst. So excited to have uh, this outlet here today to talk about this. And we're joined by a woman who's no stranger to TV romance. The great Haley Strong is here. I call myself the self-appointed expert in reality dating shows, and I would not have let you have a Too Hot to Handle a series without me. Uh, I love this show. It was great. Yeah. I had a was fantastic great. time watching it. I unironically loved it. Me too. Yeah. I was I was like yeah. going in, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just another one of those trash shows that I love. And now I'm like, it's a it's art. This is art. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. And then also here with us back to talk about some more too hot to handle uh the man who knows about all of the falafel boys that are out there and uh so so much more uh here to explain all of the british slang as well puya zambakili puya how are you i'm doing really well last time around we talked about we discovered and we answered the question who is the number one falafel boy today <laughs> we're gonna find out was it Yoni or Laurel? That's the question. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to the answer at the end of all this. I mean, I think okay. we might also find that there's a, a bigger falafel boy in town. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. A lot to talk about here today. And we're going to get into everything from episodes uh, seven and eight. We're here live. Uh, you can uh, post your questions. Hashtag RHAP. Also, uh, if you are watching us live on YouTube, we can take your questions up on the screen like so like a uh, chubby bunny says uh hi all so this is an interactive too hot to handle podcast and we'll talk about everything but kirsten i guess we should start uh we'll do a full recap of uh the uh, events leading up to this but uh, i guess to the surprise of no one it, it was sort of like that we injected a red herring into this of up oh, maybe there'll be a winner maybe <laughs> someone will win the money could be one person, could be two people. There could be a winner crowned here on Too Hot to Handle. And I said, okay, all right, this is exciting. Yeah, so it, it makes sense why they didn't actually lay out the rules of the show at mm -hmm. any point uh, because they wanted to keep us guessing, keep us on our toes. Uh, and then it turns out they really just announced who the winners were earlier when they kicked two people off because once those two are gone, we're all winners, baby. Yeah, I'm Haley, a sucker, and I believed it for a second. I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "No, no." Kels has put in so much work, and he's not going to get his money. I was, I was like, I was like, "Oh my god, oh my god, no!" And then like the suspense music, I was like, "I can't handle this. Like, what's going on? Should I fast forward?" I was freaking out, so I am very <laughs> pleased with the outcome. Like, I don't know. Ethan and I were sitting there like, "Yo, if there's going to be one winner, and it's going to be a couple, like." And they're going to give it to Harry and Francesca when they broke all the rules. Like, I don't care if they got the money back. Like, they broke all these rules. Like, no, like, that's not happening. Like, Kells, give it to Kells and Nicole. Those are the only people who deserve money. But we were, we were pleased. Puya, were you okay with the participation trophy ending to Too Hot to Handle? I mean, it was like one of those like they're building it up you know they're building up this is going to be great that moment when the green light goes off and i go wild i've been waiting to have the release and like all this build up and nothing we got nothing this was a very 
ho hum ending with the money going up. It was fun. And then it's the thing is the whole week I'm like, okay, well they're splitting the money. So like, what's the point? But then when they teased us with, it could be any, someone is winning. We're going to decide who's winning. I was like, okay, I'm into that. And then for me, it was the opposite of Haley. When the couples got up, I'm like, okay, they lost the money. They found love. That's their consolation prize. Everyone else is going to get a little bit of pocket change. And then everyone got it, which at the very least, the two people that I wanted to not get it were released eight minutes before the prize was announced. So that was a bonus, I guess. But uh, ultimately, the ending was the uh, the whiskey dick to uh, to this entire <laughs> anticipation. I will oh, say no. that. I <laughs> can can you talk us uh, through that, or or should we just move on? Don't talk I mean... us through whiskey dick. Please don't do okay, it. Okay, let's move on. Let's just move on because I'm not sure can, I get the analogy. Call Dr. Right. Mike. Send, yeah. send Puya home now. I... Okay. Yeah. You're grounded with Mike Bloom. <laughs> I... Yeah, you're gonna get run. I mean, are these references too hot to handle, Kirsten? Hot is not the word I would use to describe yeah. it. <laughs> so we, Kirsten, uh, we ended up uh, with with this uh, big ending where everybody even got my, like Bryce. Did he really? Did he learn as much as anybody? Like, there's nobody would hook up with him. If anybody hooked up, if anybody would have hooked up with him, he would have broken all the rules. Yeah, a hundred percent. Bryce is the one who's like. But if this turns green, I'm out of here. Like, I just want the sex. I'm just waiting to be told I'm allowed to have it. But mm -hmm. also, like, I don't think Kel's, like, learned anything or grew as no. a person. He was just obsessed with the money the whole time. Like, he, like, yes, he turned down shower sex with Francesca. But, like, not because he wanted to build a deeper connection, but because he didn't want to lose the money. Like, I think that's a fair reason. Know. I think no, that's yeah. a fair reason. Not Personal growth. I am a Kel's apologist. I, no, I'm with you, Haley. No, I'm with you. I love him. I just yeah. no. I can't wait for him to be yeah. my second husband. So, <laughs> oh, uh, yikes. Um. So I, I I agree with you, Kirsten. That Kel's that he did not grow. That he was like, okay, I am just not going to participate. I'm just not a part yeah. of this. So it wasn't like, boy, I have feelings for someone and I'm going to change the way I look at dating and relationships because yeah. of this experiment. Because of Lana, it's like, oh, if I want to get paid, I just uh, don't go near any women. That's the deal. Yeah, I got he, it. He should have left with Matt Jesus. He abstained. Like that's, I mean, Yeah. Like he didn't but, participate in the exercise. Yeah, he abstained in more ways than one, and I don't <laughs> think that he had any uh, personal growth there. So I, I just, I think it's weak to be like, okay, we're all winners. Like if it was always a shared pot, cool. It was always a shared pot. But the fact that they gave us hope that somebody might like imagine the reaction of Kel's not getting the money in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have would have exploded. TV he would have crushed gold. me. Mm -hmm. I would have been broken hearted. Yeah. For Kells and Nicole, my two favorite people. <laughs> Nicole, for too. Some reason. Yeah, did Nicole I grow, love... Haley? Did, no, yes. did Nicole grow? I, I don't care. She, In I, what way? I, who cares? Um, I well, love her. Her <laughs> eyelashes grew every episode. Yeah. By the end, they wrote to here. Nicole. That takes dedication she was more present in the last two episodes than yeah. she had been in the rest of the the series so that was pretty cool. yeah that she was got nice. the money because they did her dirty by not showing her more in the episode i think yeah. that was the best one like sorry yeah. they didn't give her Adam. anyone to connect with which yeah. is a real oh, except, problem uh spoiler alert told this to Kristen. her and bryce are now dating long distance oh i feel like long distance dating is the best case scenario for bryce though because he's on there's not a lot of room on the boat yeah. for cohabitation you know what I call Fugazi on on these uh, long distance dating. Like, I, like I don't think any of these. First off, uh, that it's the time of quarantine. I, everybody is long distance dating. I, I think they're just saying it for the uh, the the showmance and the and the and the couple name. Yeah. Uh, Haley, you know that if you're a a, a reality TV uh, couple, then you have a much longer shelf life than these people who are not couples. But wouldn't you pick somebody other than Bryce? if you Nobody else would have picked her. Yep. Nobody else was willing to go along with the charade. That, you don't think David would have faked it for like 15 no. minutes? David has too much class, I think, for something like that. That Bryce I'm is exactly sorry. the kind of guy. What? David has class? 
I think so. I, I think just, I'm just I, true. I, I do love, bar. You love me, fooled. Steven. No, you are fooled by his accent. Okay, you know God. what would have been money for me if Chloe and Lydia ended up together? No, not Chloe. Nicole well, and well, Lydia ended up. Actually, you know what? Give me Nicole, Chloe, and Lydia. Yeah, one they little be a I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm into that. We yeah. love yeah. Wait, hold on, Kristen. <laughs> why, why are you a uh, anti David? Yeah. I'm not, not anti David. I do you think all men? I'm just kidding. I'm just no, kidding. She, well, yeah. um, that's an interesting question to address on a live podcast. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't possibly hate men. I've dated a man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> there's just David is like, he's fine. He's perfectly nice. But is yeah. he classy? Like nobody who went on this show is classy. He put I, on I, his I, best white shirt with yeah. all the buttons I'm, open. I'm that's class. Yeah. Here. I think we got I I think he likes we're looking sex at party? class relatively to everyone else who yeah. was in the villa. Yeah. Well, yeah. I am not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to go back to Nicole, uh, who really was the most purple contestant on the show. Uh, I'm sorry, Haley. Justice uh, for Nicole. I yeah, mean, I, she was less purple than Haley by the time it ended. I think Haley was gone. Haley yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but Haley at least had a thing that she was like a total like negative Nancy. Yeah, that Nicole That's really good. didn't have a thing except she had an Irish accent. But uh, we'll get to the some of the art projects uh, that they did. But when she drew, she painted a unicorn, and the narrator said, "Like, oh, you drew a mythical creature that nobody has ever seen before." I was like, "Oh, you mean like Nicole?" <laughs> If she was gone until episode seven. You yeah. wouldn't know who Nicole is. It took she, it yeah. took Jesus leaving and Haley being kicked out, and then two of the, the one of the three people being bland for Nicole to start getting that that presence. Yeah. Which I'm not complaining about. I love that, but we should have seen more. Okay. She did herself no favors by constantly changing her hair. She should have picked straight hair Pick or curly one. hair, and people would have known her a little bit better. I think. Okay. All right. Uh, let's start to back up a little bit and talk about some of the events that got us here to this uh, finale. And and I want to uh, just start off with uh, uh, my conspiracy theory hot take of the podcast. Okay. Okay. And let me float this past you, Kirsten. Okay. Francesca was the saboteur. She was a plant from production. She was in on this. So... I say no to that for one reason and one reason only. If she was a production plant, she would not have gotten the money back with Harry when they went back into the, the private room. I uh, hear that. Uh, I just think that if she was a production plant and the and and the puppet of production, like the show kind of ends on like a lame note of like, okay, you guys will be splitting thirteen thousand dollars between the nine of you. I mean, okay, that is possible. But then someone tell me why she and Harry are still dating. Allegedly. I mean, he's in Australia. Yeah. No, he moved to L.A., oh, Rob. And she split the time between L.A. and Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Uh, look, <laughs> I've, I've seen how Francesca operates. Uh, like the, 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 the time that a like, uh, you know, better guy than Harry uh, crosses her path. I think that Harry is out the door. This is not a long term relationship. Yeah, I... According to her Instagram post, he's always been the one. Yeah. When I mean, she got they, the chance to go on a date with Corey. Hey, she but was like, well, he's hot. <laughs> she went and then she said, What Harry and I have is rare, and I can't jeopardize that. So then they ended the show together. They dated for a while. She went to Australia. He came to Canada. Then they broke up for a few months. And mm -hmm. then they got back together in September just in time for the show to come out. So I don't see what could possibly be disingenuous about this relationship. Yeah. Either that, okay, either she, if she was not a plant, Puya, my other theory about Francesca is that she's actually far and away the smartest person on the show. And she knew that, okay, yeah, oh, oh, what are you going to take away? My $3,000? Well, guess what? I'm making $3,000 every five seconds on Insta because now I've got 
six million Instagram followers from uh, being the bad girl who's going to kiss everybody on this show. Wait, do you want to guess how many followers she had as of well, this I heard afternoon? the update. I heard the update from you guys the other day. So I, I'm, I, what is she have? Two million now? Yeah, yeah she hit sure. two million today. I think yeah. she has two point one. That's Let me one check. point. Yeah, yeah, just oh, well, 2, 1. 2 million. Right, uh, like since the show came yeah, out. Yeah, she she got about 1.7. I t- I did the full update of everybody's followers when the show first mm-hmm. dropped and when uh today this afternoon. Haley, so meanwhile, account- the accountant is like, "Hey, don't screw up my 300 bucks by kissing somebody." Now, she's Rob, like I would love 500 person right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll take like $300. If anybody wants to PayPal me $25, I will happily accept it. I mean, but honestly, this at 7500 American doll hairs? No, yeah. not a chance, yeah. Rob. That's oh, true. and a free vacation in Mexico. How awful. Yeah, this and I don't have to kiss anyone. Amazing. Mm-hmm. What a dream come true for me. Honestly, yeah. Haley's right. Everyone should be PayPaling us. Yeah. <laughs> we don't no, have, what we don't I'm saying that is that that Francesca was like next level thinking mm-hmm. the money was in breaking the rules, not yeah. in following the rules. That's and that's the thing. Like she told Kells what like four episodes ago in the middle of the scene, like. I make a killing on Instagram. I don't need this. That's before all this clout came in. Mm -hmm. She obviously, we talked about the Mount Rushmore of the show. She was the one that was locked. So she's definitely the poster child of the show. Yeah. She definitely, like, doesn't matter what she did. Yeah. Yeah. Ends up with the, ends up in one of the two relationships at the end. Gains all the followers. Is the one that's most sought after by most of the thirst boys. So it's like a (laughs) win-win-win everywhere you look at it. Wait. Yeah, she's okay. She's living her life. Can I tell you guys my Francesca conspiracy theory? Yes. So I was looking back to her posts at the time that this show dropped and her previous posts. I don't think her original followers were real. Uh, I think she bought them. She Mm. bought them to get on the show. Wait, are, that, are, are you saying that that there are things about Francesca that she paid money to get that are not organic, natural things that are you she is? Robert, I would right? never that say that about Francesca. Say? I, I would never. I can't believe you would, would put that on me. Obviously, everything about her is 100% She has augmented real. her social media accounts <laughs> to enhance them. To bloated proportions. That is my theory. And I think that it holds true even with the number of followers she has now. Because, like, all of the contestants have received (laughs) a huge bump. But she spent all the prize money on followers. Only (laughs) Harry and Francesca are over a million. Okay. Harry. Yeah, Harry has 1.5 million on Instagram. She she shared the secret with him. Yeah. So, like, I just think there's something a little bit sus about that. I think I uh, like Chloe has the third highest followers now at 660,000 and she only started with 2000 followers. Yeah, she had the least, yeah. right? But I think hers is real. Organic. But I don't think that hmm. uh, Harry and Francesca's is real. Yeah. I think that she may have a lot of followers because people are like, oh, like she couldn't even get a guy on the show. Well, I'll be her friend. Uh, I'll follow her on Instagram. Those I have a DMs. shot with her must be exploding i'm sure all yeah. of these people's dms are an absolute nightmare <laughs> i'm sure all of these not, people are an absolute not nightmare for the guys I'm sure, like i'm sure harry is like uh loving life right now i yeah. mean i the guy i'm sure the guys are also getting dms from thirsty people like no i'm you, saying that yeah, yeah that's, that's what they, they like. love them they're it's excited not a nightmare to them yeah they're yeah. thrilled that's do you think Ron if, is going nuts. Do you think if Harry now slid into Lady Gaga's DMs, he would make some headway? I hope not. <laughs> maybe, probably not Gaga, but maybe a Kardashian. Which mm-hmm. one? Kendall, right? I mean, that's what makes the most sense, right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I, th- I think like, I think he could get a reply from Kendall Kardashian. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this episode seven ends up with, uh, you know, we, we sort of like ended like episode six with like, oh, like Chloe and, and Corey, like that's cute. Like they're both British. Yeah. And then like, finally, like we <laughs> hate Bryce. So at least like, okay, here's a, a you know, a, a hot new falafel guy. For Chloe, she likes him. We want Chloe to be happy. And so they have a kiss. It's nice. Uh, but then Corey 
talks with uh with harry about uh like he doesn't know like exactly what to do and harry encourages him hey like hey do it do what you got to do man that's you know follow your heart yeah uh, Corey is talking to harry about how he wants to falafel around mm -hmm. and he's interested in playing the field but what he doesn't tell Corey is it's with his girlfriend that he wants to do this yeah Haley, uh that he wants to go for the fittest bird here yeah he does doesn't he <laughs> by the way i watched this show with uh that my kids were around and i as so i watched this show with airpods in and i thought i got nine million text messages trying to uh, watch this show <laughs> with headphones in yeah they really go crazy for the uh the sound effects on yeah. this show Yes, uh, Lana was uh, was going crazy. And so basically, uh, Corey is allowed to take somebody on a date uh, and he's going to pick Francesca uh, Puya. This was, a, a, you know, a, a real high point of the series, I thought. How? How did they find someone to come in and be worse than Bryce? I thought we had seen the worst of the worst. This guy made me feel for Bryce. I, I left the show being like... Bryce, that guy, like, you know, he had a little bit of substance to him. What happened mm -hmm. to me? I, I can't believe they found this guy. The The idea that this guy with, and I don't mean to insult him, but I'm going to insult him with this landing strip on his face, thinking that he's just going to get whatever he wants, goes for Francesca, you know, slides into those DMs. Yep. Well, where'd they find him? Corey with a Wait, K. Uh, uh. Corey with a K and an I, which is just a truly wild way to spell Corey. Mm -hmm. There's no way that's his legal name. I hope. Or you think he changed it? Or he just like <laughs> stage name? I hope that it is. No, I think yeah. his name is Corey, but I think it's spelled a more conventional way and he just changed it to Last like an insane fun. Puya, I need to remind you of something that will make you hate Bryce again. Um, yes, his please. song that he sang that oh, day. I, uh, yeah. Remember, yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah. And it took blowy. Right oh, that was bad. <laughs> what was that hashtag? Like, <laughs> he really liked that too. He felt so creative. Like, oh, you know what? Like, you, you, the people at home are gonna love this one. They're gonna love old Bryce now. Like, Come on, man. What <laughs> well, are you doing? Like, if he's gonna like, if he's actually gonna combine Bryce and Chloe, shouldn't it be like Broy? Oh, is that better? Mm, that's not what he wanted. Yeah. Well, no, but yeah. like I obviously know that's not what he intended, but like he could have at least pretended that's what he intended. Yeah. He's not subtle. You think he's subtle? <laughs> Nobody's subtle. No. Nobody's subtle. No, 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 no. Bryce sucks. I just I feel like we need to remember that. Even well, when he's we're not forgiven. What we're facing <laughs> this Corey drama, these <laughs> shenanigans, we need to remember in the back of our minds how yeah. Bryce is. <laughs> Haley, so it pops up. Okay, so uh, so some Bryce is gonna take somebody on a date, and he's gonna take uh Francesca on the date. And it, I thought this was an interesting pairing because she happens to be with Harry when she gets this news, and then also here's Sharon. Oh, and what a what a coincidence! Also. They happen to be together when they got this news. Well, both of the couples were together. What? So the, the, and they the, were talking about like being a double in love. Date. Yeah. It was like a double date. Yeah, and so. Uh, you know, Francesca's are like, well, I don't know, should I go or not? And then uh, Sharon, not really a bro to Harry here, is like, what? Like, hey, if you guys are in love, like, what does it matter, right? Could you imagine if if this was that? Oh, Corey wanted to go on a date with Rhonda. How Sharon would react to that? <laughs> yeah, we saw how we reacted to David. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're right. Sharon would not be. Uh, acting the same in that situation for sure it, it's also like sure test your relationship but i don't think it's ever a good idea to be like okay yeah we're committed to each other but i'm just gonna go on a date with someone else uh just because like that's just not a good <laughs> move especially because harry was like so horrified by this like he was like like I, this isn't good and she's like mm -hmm. well i'm gonna go i don't know She's like, I was just thinking about it. Like, I'm ready for a test. I mean, like, this goes back to Rob's theory. I think she knew if I do this, more camera time, the date is going to definitely be part of the main footage. And they'll probably put out a nice spread. So, like, good food, good drinks. Like, then I'll just say no. And I'll make a big speech about how 
I found something more rare in Harry and I'm going to keep that. So it was mm -hmm. like a win, win, win on that uh, from that angle. And then I can say I was tested and I passed the test. Yeah. It was really She's great. So how smart. The, the mm. dates went from <laughs> champagne to tequila shots. It mm -hmm. didn't take long. Yeah, yeah. It's like the producers really were like, all right, yeah, here's a bottle of Patron for you guys to go yeah. on on this date. Uh, but Chloe was so upset about this, Haley, that, uh, that I did not like this part of it. Yeah. Like you didn't like that Chloe was upset or you felt bad for Chloe? Both. Well, what's the difference? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't, well, you oh, didn't I don't think, like that. I, you I, didn't I, think I Chloe like had Chloe. Chloe's my favorite. Okay, I, I'm okay. upset. I, I'm, I'm, I didn't want her to see her sad. Yeah, so my thing is, I it's in very few exceptions um, that I think the woman is to blame. Like, I think it's on Corey to tell Chloe that he's into Francesca. Um, like, sorry, you're, you, you are there to find love and go on dates and stuff with people. So, like, I don't blame Francesca for going on a date with mm -hmm. Corey. Um, and we've never gotten a whole lot of scenes like, oh, my God, like chloe and francesca are like bffs or whatever um and it didn't seem like um francesca had much time between getting up from the couch with harry like she's not gonna like make a pit stop to tell like chloe like hey by the way i'm going on a date brb like she it looks like it seemed like she went straight there oh she probably mm -hmm. had a pit stop at confessionals or whatever but mm -hmm. i don't think it's on francesca to say like hey chloe i'm going on a date with Corey. i think it's on Corey to be like Hey Chloe, I'm not that into you, but Chloe, yeah. but, but Corey's such like a d bag that he's never going to do that. Yeah, right. Yeah, and when Chloe's mad, she does first act mad at Corey before additionally being also mad at Francesca and saying that neither of them have any morals. Yeah, but yeah, and I like I, I get, I get why Chloe is upset with Francesca. She knew that Chloe was into him, so like. I, theoretically she should have said no but yeah. but no again, Corey's the bad guy here yeah, yeah it's it's on Corey for not being straight up yeah yeah go ahead Puya I mean Chloe to me like by the end of all this Chloe was number one for me from all the girls that we met throughout this story Chloe was the one that came in kind of ditzy and then she kind of you know um uh, what's it called she like <laughs> went Goldilocks a couple boys to see where the vibe is and but she was like by the end she was like I listen this was a fun experience I mean just don't mess with me don't like mm -hmm. play me because I mean she did what Corey should have done with Bryce she went to Bryce and said hey like and David really yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Chloe Two loves breaking up with people. <laughs> yeah, so I have Very no chemistry with you. I have no chemistry yeah. with you. Just you so. not there, bye. Yeah. yeah. She only had chemistry with Nicole. Uh, that was because she was the only person to talk to Nicole the whole time. That was it. They were uh, best friends. Yeah, she was upset. She put on her Barbie dress, Kirsten, and then uh, got left waiting. <laughs> she looked. Okay. And so what we got from this, like when she talks with Corey later, is like Corey told her he wanted to go on a date with her and made her think, oh, we're going to have a date tonight. Mm. So she was getting ready for that date when Corey asks Francesca instead. Mm -hmm. So. That's like an extra twist to the knife of just like, you know what? I told her I want to go on a date with her. She's getting ready for that date. But you know what? I'll just take somebody else because I, I'm i not here for anything serious. Yeah. I, I did love the confrontation that they had later, Kirsten, where, uh, so then, good. Uh, where Chloe calls out Francesca and says, that was a really sly thing that you did. And she said, you know what? You don't even like him. You just like the chase. Is she wrong? Yeah, she, I Where's mean, she's lie? absolutely right. It's just like when Francesca broke things off with Kells because he rejected her. Yeah, so, he wasn't chasing. He didn't play her game. He didn't. He didn't do what she wanted. So then she left to be with someone who was I more. Uh, I didn't even really like him. Uh, yeah, she's like he, he's Where's not. Harry? Exactly. She's like he's not even that cute. He's like totally ugly. I don't, I, I don't want to be with him. I did like how Francesca and Chloe both did handle this conversation. Like they didn't yell, they didn't like scream. Chloe was just like, "I don't want to talk to you anymore." And Francesca's like, "I understand." Like I really <laughs> appreciated <laughs> this. I yeah, I thought that was really good. Um, I yeah, I yeah, I, I totally got it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Chloe. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> 
Uh, Which is actually a point against the producer plant slash just for the airtime theory, because mm -hmm. I think that if she was going for airtime, Francesca would have blown that up into a huge argument. It's fair. Because I think point. Chloe would have met that energy if Francesca had brought it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then she might have, you know, because the whole thing is it's like she kind of got the camera time and then kept Harry and everything was smooth. If she starts de getting defensive about it now it's like oh what were you kind of into this and like it brings the story back it's like oh it's buried we can move on it's all good i don't need to like keep this going any longer yeah yeah she's but also, for the airtime yeah you know she might also kind of be like kind of limited with uh what she's like she's uh not exactly like amy adams out there that she has a lot of range she can kind of <laughs> yeah. only do a couple things oh she wasn't good with acting we learned that when they were investigating <laughs> right. earlier in the season that yeah. is true. Right. So she goes on a date now uh, with with Corey. Uh, Haley, did you think that Francesca was going to be able to resist Corey? I mean, I feel like a lot of people could have been able to resist Corey. I thought Corey was a good looking guy. I was surprised. Sure, but he's such a D-bag. Yeah. Well, like, he doesn't like, seem he's just like that he bothers just people on the show. Radiates d -bag. Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. he's attractive, but he's so just... Ugh. She said, you're sexy. She, I mean, yeah, she was laying it on thick with him. Eh? <laughs> she, I mean, the other thing, too, is a lot of people find people sexy, but don't particularly like them or actually want to sex with them. Case in mm -hmm. point, Kirsten and Harry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was just funny to me that, you know, he asks Francesca out on the date. He's said, you know, Francesca's the, the hottest bird here, whatever, like it shooting is. a shot. And then. Francesca pulls up to this date and homeboy sitting there in like the plainest white t-shirt. Like, like he. Yeah. Oh, oh no. He's literally sitting Haley. like this. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, put like a little bit of Francesca energy in. Yeah. I just. <laughs> no. Like, come on. Man. He's just yeah. leaning aggressively. All right. Haley, uh, as He's our resident. <laughs> As our resident uh, food expert on the panel and part of the Top Chef Roundtable. So uh, Francesca uses uh, an interesting analogy here to describe this. She says that this was like having the most tempting vegan junk food around. And mm -hmm. it was right there, the del delicious vegan junk food. But instead, she's just going to go back and eat the carrots and celery. And the broccoli. Ooh, I love me some broccoli. Um, I guess I probably wouldn't be super swayed by vegan desserts either. Yes. Uh, Kirsten, what, what are some vegan junk food options? I mean, Oreos are vegan. Um, potato chips are vegan. Um, there's a lot of vegan foods. Yeah, I feel like that... Uh, like, what are some junk food options that, that... I mean, short of like a hamburger. With like, what's what's not vegan that's junk food? Um, like ice cream, mm -hmm. uh, most baked goods, unless they're made specifically vegan. Um, you know, any, anything with an animal product, not vegan. Okay. Honey, All if right. you just want to like eat it out of the tub. God, it's so gross. I can't even. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I just, I thought I would. it was funny. I, I would put like honey in tea, but not just eat it like my mm -hmm. mom had this cold <laughs> remedy where if you're like if you're really sick she would be like oh just put cayenne pepper on a spoonful of honey and eat mm -hmm. it and i have no problem with the cayenne pepper but i've never been able to do it because the honey is just so like Ugh. But so i had a bartender in university who used to serve me shots of whiskey with a chase of hot water and salt after when i had a sore throat so maybe try that next time i mean winnie the pooh put honey on the map like that though mm -hmm. so come on yeah but he's yeah. not the bear <laughs> True. What do I, what do Winnie the Pooh and the cast of Too Hot to Handle have in common? <laughs> Neither wear pants. wear pants. You got yeah. it. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, uh, Puya, were you invested at all in David and Lydia and their various check-ins that we got over these last two episodes? Um. So initially, no. Initially, I genuinely thought these three people are coming off the boat to like falafel everything and mm -hmm. like just go in i thought lydia especially was coming in like i'm i'm i've got this i'm a goddess of sex and i'm gonna take it all and then i felt like slowly but surely you know nice guy david and lydia actually hit it off and it was very sweet to see and then just lydia's growth was very much shown to the point where it really made it clear how the other two newbies in Corey and i want to say madison 
Madison. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I, every time I forgot her name. Um, they did nothing. They have got no yeah. growth. They didn't care for it. But she really put in the work. So the weak draft wanna, class. Yeah. So I want to say that for me, I mean, you know, not a hot take. I believe Lydia did miles better for me to care about her than Bryce did, than Corey yeah. did, than Madison did, and you know, we didn't see enough of Nicole, but and definitely more than Haley did. And I want to specify because even though we're both on here and we're talking about the show, I don't mean Haley Strong. I mean Haley, the TV yes. character from I Florida. Got I got appreciated it. in your last podcast when right off the top, you're like, I hate Haley. And then you go, not Haley Strong, by not the Haley way. Strong. I appreciated I it. Yeah. I knew you weren't talking about me, but I like kind of internalized it slightly. <laughs> oh, no. Um, One thing that was very sweet about David and Lydia is – Lydia was like massaging David with sunscreen and like sunscreen oh. was David's thing. It was like yeah. a cute little role reversal. Yeah. I ended fun. up really liking Lydia yeah. even in like the three episodes she was on. Yeah. I wish I wish she could have been there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two, Madison and Cor like Madison, I found to be <laughs> Madison the most useless person so on the much. show. I thought yeah. her skin looked fantastic the entire series. Yeah. But I just, she like, every time she was on screen, I'm like, why? What are you doing? What is the mm -hmm. point? Liana Boris was a big fan of Madison's butt. I will say that. Okay. Fascinated. <laughs> but I don't think it was better than Rhonda's. No, Liana was convinced that it was a augmented butt. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I must admit, I... Uh, I didn't pay that much attention to Madison's butt. Yeah. How could you not in that snakeskin outfit? It was like a snakeskin blazer, and then with the matching like pants. bathing like bathing suit, like bra and hot pants underneath. Yeah. I honestly, Where I posted find that. I posted today that I thought Francesca's shirt that was just like a tiny bikini top with the sleeves just attached from the side was the most baffling wardrobe choice of the entire show. Mine and people was were like, Rhonda's, no. mine was Rhonda's like t-shirt, kind of like that, but it was just like. Like, there was, like, a tiny bit of neck, but then it was just, like, boob. No, I think, see, I think that one's cute. People brought that up as an option and were, like, what about this? And I was, like, no, that's cute. And then people were, like, oh, yeah. but what about Madison's finale look? And I was, like, no, like, Francesca's where those sleeves come out of the side of the torso was the craziest thing. Yeah. I, I have to say, the, I, the entire costume design on the series was really that I, I think that they brought in some of the most innovative designers possible of how many different ways could we do cleavage creatively over the course of the series. And I, I think they really outdid themselves with a lot of creative things I, that I, I didn't even know these were things. I'm Honestly, I'm shocked there was only one nip slip like in True. the series yeah. but like, also only one when how like my watch has better coverage than half these bathing suits <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean but you know what it brought everyone to the side of the light and under boob 2020 okay it's here mm -hmm. it's it is here you and can see the under boob in like the 2020 with the zeros exactly oh, okay. somebody exactly. designed that logo <laughs> you can use Haley's watch as the uh, bikini yeah, in that, don't that use under me as the model please <laughs> oh no 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 no, no, no. Do not do that. Uh, don't, don't do that. Do that. No, no, don't no. do that, anybody. You okay. like Francesca. You know what? Maybe do it. Let's see what happens. No, just kidding. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't do it. Okay. All right. Uh, should we talk about the uh, art project for the women uh, that we we had the men they went on there uh, I thought that was the the low point of the series oh, yeah. uh, the men art project day of uh, with the heart warrior so boring all of that uh, this was uh, it was uh, a time of discovery for the women and uh this yeah. this was uh, a time i was happy i was wearing my my earbuds uh when my children were around so it turns out that all you need is a hand mirror and your own uh yona to become a feminist that's yeah. all you need i used to have a yonana <laughs> you did <laughs> that's true that is true mm -hmm. I, I wasn't ready for that yeah, it was a messy cleanup with the Yonana. Oh I don't God. use it very often. Oh, no. <laughs> Yonana is different. What is you? What what is that? Is that a big? It's color? it's uh, where you make frozen yogurt out of frozen out of a banana. banana. Oh. You put banana. You put your banana in the freezer. Haley thought you were just sharing way too much information. No. I didn't know what you were referring to for a hot <laughs> No, that's a Yonana. Yonana. It's yeah. a big mess. Um, okay. 
But okay, so way, the, I don't want to talk about Yonan as a big mess. Okay, so all right, back to the Yoni. Um, <laughs> also, so, I don't want to talk about being a big mess. Yeah. So all right, so we yeah, had to no. do the uh, the art project, and um, no. there were some some uh, I thought some odd things that uh, people people seem to have some problems uh, that somebody's ring got caught, Kirsten. I know I was just very at a loss in this in this moment because I thought they were just, you know, they're going to look at it. But then it was like, no, we're going to look like inside it. And yeah. I literally and metaphorically. Yeah, yeah it, it was um, it was an interesting decision to put on a on a television show uh an interesting editing choice was when fran was like oh it looks like heaven and then they did like the <laughs> jesus music and the and the light uh, not not jesus matt <laughs> not no. jesus matt uh he, yeah uh, he wasn't there for this. sorry he missed this he would have come back for he this. probably was a big fan of this episode yeah um Tell me if I'm crazy, but uh, that Kirsten, I, I did feel like that the, the women seem like that they got a lot out of this exercise in terms of especially Chloe seemed to walk away from this uh, with like a lot more self confidence enough to tell off Corey after this was all over. Yeah. So I'm assuming that there was a lot more to this where they, you know, shared as a group and like talked about their insecurities and like the pressure that's put on them from society as women and like, probably grew a lot in that way but that doesn't make great television so they mm -hmm. just left it at this uh aspect of the workshop mm -hmm. uh but yeah it does seem like they got a lot out of it it was almost as startling as when david just started crying after looking rond in the eyes yeah uh but they they drew some great pictures yeah. um a lot of artists in this group yeah a lot really. of creative people uh but did we dodge a bullet that they didn't do this exercise with the men I think it was the right call. I think that was very appropriately. They would have chosen. liked it too much. Yeah, yeah. They, they wouldn't make canvas large enough for these men yeah. to You're be to drawing the their moment. representation. Yeah. they you would also, have been like, "Oh yeah, this is what we're drawing." You also get the sense that they're also very familiar with uh, <laughs> every with every aspect. They wouldn't have needed the 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 mirror that they could do it from memory. Very I mean, lucky. also, I just don't think you would need a, a mirror for that. It's just different. <laughs> I mean, in some areas, you might need the mirror. I would like yeah. to no, say no, no. that <laughs> I was very happy that this workshop didn't end with them running at their paintings with sticks. I was very okay with that not being the <laughs> That ending. would defeat the purpose. They're yes, trying to avoid sticks so. in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, no Good sticks call. allowed. Right. How dare yeah. you? Kirsten, did any of the paintings uh, re really, uh, were, were you uh, loving the work that anyone did? I mean, I was very impressed that Lydia managed to include the entire plane of Earth, Earth. in her drawing. Yes. A very yeah. good representation of Earth, too. Yes. Like, Haley didn't even know where Australia was, where Lydia painted a pretty good representation of Earth. Yeah. Was yeah. it Chloe that uh, then had a, a condom to protect the the whole area? How could um, you forget her asking how to spell condom? Yeah, she has how to spell how to spell condom. I love I love her so much. <laughs> she is an angel sent to us directly from heaven. I I yeah. love a stupid person that knows they're stupid. It's yeah. very charming. Yeah, it was endearing. It was she's self she's self aware in a way that other people just aren't, and it's a joy. Looking at the rest of the too hot to handle cast. Yeah, Kirsten, yeah. should they have uh, put these paintings up on eBay? They still might. Mm -hmm. Like it. It hasn't been that long. The show just dropped a week ago. Uh, <laughs> they could be waiting for like a little bit more social media attention, and then they'll uh, they'll auction them off. Which one mm -hmm. would you buy for your office, Robert? Um, let's see. Um, I think probably uh the Fran uh Franny Cat one. Yeah, uh, I'm a cat person, been, so that's going up on the gallery. Since wall. I think that that's probably the one that would raise the least eyebrows when people came into the studio to say like, "Oh, that's a picture of a cat," as opposed to, "Is that a yoni on your wall?" <laughs> Lydia's was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Lydia I'm going for literal <laughs> representation. Lydia did a great job. I mm -hmm. don't. I mean, I don't think people would necessarily think Rhonda's uh, was a yoni. They Which, really played up the beauty of that art just because she like told a big secret. Like yeah. I, I looked at it and I was like, 
I'm purple. I, I was like, is this dandelions coming out of a test tube? Clouds, maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe clouds. How, have we, how have we not talked about this big drop? Just, oh, episode seven. Oh, Rhonda, I have a child. Haven't told yeah. anyone. Yeah, that was <laughs> wild. Yeah. Welcome um, to the shock of the season, my yeah. friends. Yeah, well, okay. Well, that, yeah, we, we we haven't gotten to that yet. That's but yeah, that was a big. They dropped a big bombshell on us that Rhonda has a kid and she needs to tell Sharon about this. Uh, Puya, uh, yes. what was your reaction to uh, baby R uh, Rhonda? I believe Amari. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Very I um cute baby. I was convinced that I had not done my homework right and hadn't mm -hmm. watched everything properly. I thought, was I really not paying attention? Because there's no way you're dropping this information on us in episode six. There's no way. I mean, it's like I, I understood her being scared to reveal this to, you know, man child Sharon. Sharon, so right? It made sense, made complete sense. Um, and I'm glad that she had thought about getting to do this before the exercise and then the exercise confirmed it. But I was completely baffled. And then there was a part of me that was worried that Sharon was going to have a very big reaction to this in a negative way because Sharon has not given us any reason to believe that he's going to handle this. Not even let's not even say maturely, but just like handle it calmly. Yeah, right, right. I mean, Kirsten, yeah. where my head was going was so. All right. So there's this baby. Is there a uh, is there an x uh for for ronda in the picture and and how is sharon going to handle uh another man in the potential life of ronda spoiler alert uh they are no longer together well but if they just lived in the same place they would be together they were planning to visit each other before mm -hmm. quarantine happened and they definitely didn't say that just because the show is a hit okay mm -hmm. it was for sure a real thing that was going to happen there was another in i read probably five um where are they now pieces um yeah. and some of them not all of them had like the same information but one of them i read said that uh, Rhonda is currently with an ex and she's very happy. Oh. Oh. Sharon is not going to like that. I read one that was like, they tried dating and then they lost touch for a while. Oh boy. Which is just, oh, no, there's like 45 different ways you can What happened to the growth? Touch. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand how you just lose touch with someone in, uh, you know, 2019, 2020, but that was what the first article I read had said and I was just floored at the concept of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we also got after the big art project that Chloe had the confidence to yes. confront Corey and uh, Puya. We got this word a lot here uh, in these last couple episodes that Chloe thought that uh, Corey was a bit muggy. Hell yeah, you mugged yeah. her off. Yeah, you don't mug someone off. I, like, one of my favorite phrases is when someone angrily gets in your face and says, are you mugging me off? Are you mugging me off? And Especially that is when not they're great. just trying to have a laugh. Exactly. You're just having a yeah. laugh with the lads, you know? So, yeah. So being mug, it was like pretty much, you know, stood her up, was, you know, a bit of a falafel to her. Like Many made a ways fool of her. Yeah, yeah, basically. Mugging someone yeah, off. Yeah, make her look a fool, pretty much, is exactly how yeah. you would how you would describe that. And I thought she handled him great. Right. I, there's nothing better than watching a guy get it handed to him to the point where he's going to be like, you know what? I don't even care about this conversation. I'm going to leave. It's like, uh oh, you took an L and you don't want to stay here to stink in it. You want to just run away. What I also loved is he's like, Yo, okay, well, I'll tell you now. Like, I wasn't interested. And she was like, No, I'm not giving you that opportunity. I don't want to go anywhere near you now. I just want <laughs> you to know mm -hmm. that you did this and you're a bad person. Yeah. And I uh, love that. He thought that she got too big for her britches, Kirsten. Well, he can she go has very tiny britches. Full awful himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um so all right, we uh, got a, a little bit of uh, the the, uh, the kid uh, with Sharon. He seemed fine with it. Yeah, no big deal. He was uh, like surprisingly supportive. Yeah, yeah it's fine. I was. I was. Sh my biggest shock of the episode was Rhonda saying she had a kid. My second shock of the episode was how chill he was about it. Because, like, I don't know me personally, Haley Strong, not the biggest lover of child Ren, like, would be super chill. <laughs> 
<laughs> with somebody being like, you know what? We have been dating for three weeks solid. BT dubs, Jay and child. <laughs> My and then also you're going to meet him right now. Yeah. 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 No, oh, by the way, I got him on FaceTime. Yeah. Biggest surprise to me is like, uh, Sean, you're about to meet her child for the first time. Put on a damn shirt. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, no, you rock. I want to see the abs. He wants yeah, it's the like, to know it's like, what, This yeah, kid's like, gonna be all confused. You're like, "Hey, how you doing? Yeah, me and your mom know each other now. We're friends. I'm her friend. We're how friends. old are you? Like, yeah. we're sixteen thousand dollars worth yeah. friends. Uh, Amari, I have some bad news for you. Your mom is on a show called Too Hot to Handle, <laughs> where men. Various men rubbed sunscreen on her butt. <laughs> I mean, I think only one man did that. To be fair, I mean, yeah, that's I mean, sunscreen. Yeah, so I'm sorry, Amari. Okay, uh, <laughs> so Do you imagine it's uh, it's twenty uh, thirty six, and Amari Google's his mom, and this podcast comes. Up. Amari's growing up with no. Hulu only, no Netflix in the house. <laughs> Netflix. No Netflix. Okay. Um, so then things took a turn here uh, where it was night vision. And Chris, I, I was glad you brought this back up uh, in, that that because uh, we had said in the premiere episode, like, hey, uh, we, we saw where it was uh, Francesca and the other Haley, the Haley that sucks. Yeah. Uh, they said, hey, should we make out? Oh, wait, no, we have to go in front of the thing. So it sees us. <laughs> so apparently Harry and Francesca were thinking the same thing of like, hey, uh, we can do stuff in the bed. Uh, and then if it's under the covers, then it didn't, she, nobody will know. Yeah. It, it didn't happen. They can't see what happens under the covers. It's definitely not obvious. Yeah. Um, seen a TV show before. What, what I really liked about this though, is that the, the show tried to trick us into thinking they actually got away with it. Yeah. There's a lot of fake out very prolonged, like, like uh, Long getting us ready for the finale with how long they were yeah. gonna stretch they, out. They had me in the first half, okay. <laughs> I'm not mm-hmm. gonna lie, they had us in the first <laughs> half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um Puya, that uh, we've talked a lot about the uh account, and now we're none of us are Kells here, none of us are uh CPAs. Uh I did feel like that the accounting here, uh three thousand for a kiss, three thousand for a kiss, twenty thousand dollars. For the intercourse. I thought this was a steal here uh, for 6K. Why wouldn't you just skip kisses and go right to this? I'm sorry. Well, but this also makes it... (laughs) What was the $16,000? Because now that math no longer makes any sense. There's yeah. many ways we can we can cut the pie here of what the money went down. I would like to go back to one of Liana's <laughs> interpretation. This is not my interpretation. I want to make sure my hands are clean of this. <laughs> right. Liana's theory is it wasn't half the amount. It wasn't a 10 k or because it was the there was no there was completion. No, no, there was no completion. Oh, okay. No completion. How do they no, know? I, I, how do they know? No, I mean, how I does think, Leon, I don't know. I think, there, I think there was definitely completion. I think it would have been 10K if there had been reciprocation. But Harry is a falafel boy, and there was not. <laughs> yeah, how do we get to 16K? <laughs> That's what I would like to know. What? Because it's so it's like 16,000. So then it's like, okay, so we'll minus, you know, 6,000 for that. Well, minus mm-hmm. three thousand for kissing. Mm-hmm, okay. So then it's like, what was the seven thousand that's left? I don't know. It's algebra that I don't know how to do. I'm not a scientist, yeah. but I would really like for them to give us the breakdown of how much <laughs> things cost because otherwise they're yeah. just making things up. Yeah, Haley, should we get like the edge of extinction fire token menu at the start of the season? Yeah, uh, for amazing, season two. Yes. Amazing idea. That is and, exactly what I want because I like to know what oh, I'm in for. Oh, oh, I think I just figured out a way to save the edge of extinction. Uh, Kirsten, <laughs> intercourse. Uh, could no? Could we combine? <laughs> these two shows of like uh let's put showers and stuff on the edge of extinction uh and then also it's too hot to handle uh so if anybody hooks up on the edge of extinction sorry robin amber you're not gonna do it this time <laughs> yeah uh, you lose so fire tokens money. i mean yeah. that seems very rigged i think ponderosa you though ponderosa you- <laughs> You could have just gotten for edge of extinction. You could just have like a shower there, the ability to like brush your teeth or whatever. Yeah. And you have to pay fire tokens for that. Uh, and seeing them struggle that who that kicked work. it? Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. But Haley, and then uh, the other thing that was very puzzling about this was that we were set up with, okay, oh, uh, uh, this was, okay, so Chloe, uh, Chloe and Corey kissed $3,000. Everybody's like, oh, all right, no big deal. Uh, and it's like, all right, David and Lydia kissed. Like, oh, okay, we like them. Okay, uh, no big deal. And then it's like, oh, here's the bombshell. Uh, and then it's like, oh, they couldn't. Everybody's like, the head's exploding. It was still only 6K. They didn't care for the other two, 3Ks that they just, they also lost 6K from the other people. But now these two, oh! Because, because, and I agree with them because I don't know why I'm in, I, I don't know why. Because Francesca has been so like, oh, who cares about money? Like her and Harold have lost like 30K each, like between mm -hmm. them. They've lost yeah. all of the money. So if you want like 3K to like figure yourself out, have at her, That's my fine. friend. That's fine. But if you can't just like keep it in your pantaloons for like 45 and a half minutes so you could keep money, like it's like, I don't know. Oh, you're going to kiss Haley just because for spite. Oh, you're going to kiss Harry, even though you know you're not supposed yeah. to. You're going to yeah. give Harry a blowsy under the covers because you think Atlanta's stupid. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I would be mad too. They're dumb. Yeah, it was more that they insulted Lana's intelligence. It's, I, was, I was, I was like, they, when Francesca, I was getting, I was getting heated because Francesca was like, they hate our relationship. They are jealous of our relationship. Like, no, you're just being reckless, my friends. Like, you've had your opportunities, mm -hmm. and now you're just being like, we don't care about anyone else. Like, sorry, you're on it. You're an ensemble show. This isn't your show, Francesca. Yeah, it's literally like... just it's a pattern okay. of behavior with them That's that the others is. have not developed. Yes. Disrespect. Yes. I mean, also yeah. they're the only two that had already done the whole Arlie shebang of like the whole twenty k deal. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> They've already done it. They're the only ones who have done it. So yeah, like it's more angering now because like hey, you guys already took your took your share yeah. out of the honey yeah. pot. Like, why are yeah. you taking more? We're not even taking our share. It's like it's like we <laughs> bought a pizza, it's 24 slices, it's like three slices each. You guys have had 12 of them. Leave us that's, the 12. That's the thing. That's the thing. It's like, no, we don't hate your relationship. Yeah. We hate you, Francesca. Yeah. I you're being selfish. Like we just blew count. past. Cal wants money, whole... okay? We all want money. Stop yeah. stealing money from yes, Kel. I'm sorry, you have 300,000 followers on IG, but Kel does million. not. He <laughs> needs that money. He's playing yeah. an American football league in England. Like, he's not raking it in, Francesca. I'm, I'm not okay with Puya using they did the whole Arlie Shaban <laughs> to, to refer to sex. I know him. You can't just say that. No, but I said it shebang with a G at the end. I know mm -hmm. my audience. I know you'd like that. Mm -hmm. I no, you. I don't. I'm, yeah. I'm not okay. She's upset. Kristen, do, you, do you think that part of the problem was that oh. this was the first sexual act that was committed uh, in the common room? Like, was any part of that uh, an issue for these people? Um, I don't think so because I don't think they like necessarily understood that that's where it happened. Like mm -hmm. in Love Island, it'll be a thing where a couple will like have sex in the room that everybody has all their beds in and the people will be like, they'll everyone else will be awake, like looking at each other like, oh my God, can you believe this? Can you believe this is happening? Like, oh my God, yes. They're like cheering and like excited. Whereas this one, it seems like no one else knew it happened. They like yeah. waited until everyone was asleep. Uh, I think they're just like, really? You guys have already... Mm -hmm. lost yeah. us so much money and now you're doing this no, and yeah. honestly rob i feel like this cast more than any cast of any show that i can think of knows each other way too well given all the pent-up frustration they're probably walking through tents every day so like everyone kind of has seen each other at their worst so they're not too like fussed about that well like. there was at one point where uh david and sharon had a conversation and then they were talking about like okay like they're giving each other a hug and then uh i, I was a sharon is like all right uh don't get a boner <laughs> <laughs> i and okay this show made me into a monster because like they'd be like getting up and i'd be like do they have a boner or not I was on the sex PD as well. I was uh, I was keeping an eye out, but it was mostly inconclusive. Inconclusive, <laughs> <Poor> <laughs> man. That's weird things, Tia. Yeah. Inconclusive. Should they get charged for that, Kirsten? Should that be like oh, uh, 30 bucks? I mean, I... 
am I don't have those parts, so I I can't speak to this properly. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's fair. I don't think they can help it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um... <laughs> Haley is like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's also that the, the contestants themselves uh, were uh, thinking about the the pricing menu. Puya, there was some question of Fr- Francesca. I, I don't know how uh, how well she's able to uh, use her feet. Uh, she wanted to know how much how much would that cost? Yeah, she also had a question about another thing later yes, on as well. Yes. Uh, I... uh, for this podcast, we're going to call it the Reverse Lana, and that's it. The re- yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what, what would, would that have been over twenty k? I don't think so. I don't Maybe know is, I that don't know. is that cheaper? Is that either cheaper or it's well over? Was that it's the sixteen k? <laughs> Haley left. Haley <laughs> left. Okay. But- Haley's <laughs> gone, and that is your fault. Okay. Um, <laughs> I what what is most concerning Reverse about Lana. this? Took me- <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that's someone. Someone tweeted today, and they were like, "How? Like it was a Netflix thing. Like thinking about how we got the name Lana." look at it backwards. Like that was a literal tweet from like the official Netflix account. A few people sent that to me today. Mm-hmm. But so what's concerning the most about Francesca in this moment? Besides, besides Haley uh, walking That's, off the show. I mean, <laughs> you know what? Haley to quit this show. <laughs> I, you know what? She just didn't grow enough, I guess. Um, <laughs> no. So the issue is, is Francesca seems to have no regard for her own pleasure at all yeah and that, it's well, that's very th- troubling yes yes that i feel like that uh I, it seems like and i'm not no psychologist but like uh like it seems like that her entire self-worth is wrapped up in how much guys are lusting after her and i just i want her to think about herself i i want her to think of what those men could do for her and not mm-hmm. just what she could do for them i just <laughs> i would like i would have thought that after the yoni workshop she would have been more focused on that no. but no she was like i'm going to think about other people's yonis but not my own mhm yeah um uh, so for the most part though i think like text Haley ep- to come back yeah text her to come back uh but yeah i feel like for the most part episode eight was uh a big oh, waste pa- of everybody her power time. went out guys oh okay all right all right that's um unlucky. it I- was a uh, a big waste of everybody's time no Honestly, especially with episode seven being what I thought one of the stronger episodes, everyone in the series, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, And like every person that was on the episode had some kind of a showing, had some kind of a story that I was invested in enough to see. And, and there was no Bryce the entire episode. Yeah. That was was the best part. Yeah. So it was like the perfect episode. And I got so, so stoked to get into episode eight. Episode 8 ultimately was a ho-hum. I think it's a combination of the way it ended. Yeah. And also, like, from the midpoint of the episode, the story kind of changed. And it felt like they're trying to put a pretty bow on, like, oh, look at the journey we've been on. And it just changed the tone of what this show is. I mean, this is your show where the title, the starting title when the show starts, is a melting hot. Word Mm -hmm. hot is melting. So it's like, this was not sweating. Oh, it is sweating. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, It's a show for, you know... The thirstiest, the serial swipers, whatever you're calling them, we're calling yeah. them the falafel boys and girls. To give make it seem like it's one big happy family wasn't really doing it much for me. And then to kind of have like the the everyone's friends and winning at the end, it's like, okay, we're not watching Sesame Street. We're watching Too Hot to Handle. And it didn't feel mm-hmm. like it was on the same show. Yeah. Kirsten, uh, who had the worst uh, finale on Netflix reality? Too Hot to Handle or The Circle? This was still better than the circle. Yeah, <laughs> but there that really is like a a spot that they, they don't just know how to end these figure shows. out. They're like, we've got the content, we know how to make the episodes, and then it's like, oh, oh no, this they don't one know how to is wrap it up. the last episode. What do we do? Let's make the pacing really slow and bad. <laughs> yes. Okay. Haley is back with us. We, we thought power. you quit the show. Yeah, we thought you quit because they were being inappropriate. Oh, no. Sorry. Yeah. I was just like in a whole like black room. I was No, I assume that Jesus made me quit because too hot to handle does not fall within his rules. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so 
Um, let me go back to uh, the boat trip uh, that Rhonda and Sharon took. Uh, Kirsten, was this good closure for you on the, their storyline? Hey, uh, he asked her to be his girlfriend. He said, do you want to go study? Do you want to wear my Letterman jacket? And she said, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been girlfriend proposed to before? Mm -hmm. Me? I'm, I'm still yeah. not sure if Ethan and I are dating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can say for sh absolute certain that uh, no one has ever said do you want to be my girlfriend? Because I end up in relationships on accident and it's not great. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Mine was uh, an accident, but we never had a conversation. Like the first time we ever had a conversation about like, oh, like are we in a relationship was like when we signed a mortgage and then B when he literally proposed. Like, hey, do you like, I don't know, like maybe want to get married? It's like, I, I, oh, I guess. Are we, are we exclusive? Are we? Is it just you and me so you just sometimes you just have to define the relationship uh after you've been dating for several years yeah like My... it's only been half a decade like what am i supposed to commit to this guy like this whole scene was very worrisome for me because before he asks there's like this shot where i'm very certain that Rhonda's about to get seasick so I was like, this yeah. whole moment will get wrecked if Rhonda Ralphs all over him before he it gets also, an answer. They really set it up to be like, is he going to actually propose? They really made it seem like it was going to be a proposal, yeah. which I could see happening on this show just because it's mm -hmm. insane. But I was like, it was like watching a horror film. I was like, yeah. no, don't go in there. I mean, the don't love is blind that. people uh, got engaged so well yeah, I, I didn't it. watch that show okay it was so. also magical yeah, that it was, was also an magical that was an i don't know uh so we had a way for the contestants to earn money back uh once we were down uh less than halfway that uh the ultimate test was going to be to send uh harry and franny uh <laughs> off to go back to the luxury suite uh surrounded by temptation at every turn. Uh, Haley, did they fake you out? Did you think that they had gotten back together? <laughs> that that they had gotten... Who? Wait, what? That, that, that Franny and Harry uh, were able... Did, did you think that they had given into temptation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely thought that. They're both dumb and hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love dumb hot people on an island. I uh, This is also, I think, where the announcer calls them horny Harry and frisky Francesca. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, that's good. Which was incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, um, Puya, it seems like that um, I don't know how on the level this could have been. Uh, it's like, hey, let's try to let's try to win this money back. And she's like completely naked. He's like getting in a bath. Um, I, I don't know. It seemed like that they were like really like going out of their way to like, well, let's just tempt fate here. Right. And like he's he like handcuffs himself to a chair. That a is wicker not even chair. out of the way. So hard. That was so <laughs> funny. Have, yeah, he's running all around. Yeah, no. If, if, if this was like them trying to joke around and be like, "Hey, we're not doing this, but let's have fun with it," it makes sense. But this entire challenge, the best part of it wasn't the will they, won't they. It was everyone else's reaction to. There is no way these two are going to be able to put toothpaste back in the tube. There is no way that they're going to be successful. This is a wash. If anything, we're going to lose another 20K. Mm -hmm. So everyone's lack of trust in them was the best part of this entire temptation for me. Yeah. I My favorite part was when Harry was face down in the bathtub and the water was literally too hot to handle. <laughs> <laughs> Panic. Just, it like, was like that's, not, that's yeah. not how you draw a bath. He was like practicing bubbles for like floating or whatever. It was mm -hmm. very strange. I'm gonna yeah. consider that next time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we got everybody back together to have the uh the big reveal uh that we had the aforementioned uh first wardrobe malfunction of the series, which Kirsten, uh this was amazing that uh over the course of eight episodes we only had one wardrobe malfunction i think that we probably had several more than one but this was the only one that happened at a, a key moment that they wanted to show mm -hmm. like yeah. I, if, I think if they wanted to show uh nip slips in this show they they could have filled every episode with them yeah we got a little outline of francesca <laughs> in, right before the bathtub 
Yeah, we got. I, I think we got a lot of outline. Count? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying. Throughout the yeah. course of the series, uh, Haley, who was it that then jumped on the grenade uh, to cover her? It seemed like that. That was it. Chloe. That did she jump into? It uh, was. Was it Chloe? Um, probably. I feel like it was maybe Lydia because she was the closest. Maybe it was Nicole. Maybe, maybe, maybe. it was one of the women. Yeah. I feel like they were probably more likely to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like the, the men, men weren't going to. Uh, was to Corey cover. still yeah. there at this point? I feel like he would have been like, "Hello." No, yeah, he wasn't eliminated yet. I don't yeah, think. no, he he would have been like, um, "I'm going to cover that with myself." No, oh, yikes. Um, <laughs> we had, we had time for one more art project along the way, which I kind of felt like that we could have gone out on the on the high uh, yoni note. Uh, this was right on your body anything mean anybody ever said to you this was an, granted an effective workshop right so it was a very effective workshop. i feel like if you're in the moment if you're going through that it will bring some stuff out it will open a dialogue that's good what i didn't like was the show waited for the last episode after they know they know their audience and the rest of us are all gonna have very negative opinions to have about these people and then they're like but they're all human gang but mm-hmm. they're so but they've learned so much you know like they've they've gone through this journey i didn't like it was called what was it called the rebirthing was the yeah, workshop it, it was no, the no. it was the rebirthing and i've already been cyber bullying for a week at this point mm-hmm. and now i see this and i'm like well i'm a real asshole great yeah um i forever a sucker was obviously very moved by this <laughs> i honestly i almost cried and it takes a like, lot i was like, like how beautiful i when, was like <laughs> when nicole, nicole when she was like you're gonna have to play like, cow and i was like nicole, yeah. like and like obviously here if you call someone a cow it's like not nice but it's not like a super serious thing mm-hmm. and like great britain and that area yeah it's like a very serious insult to call someone a cow yeah puyo uh what about when sharon talked about how that uh at times uh he was called falafel boy <laughs> <laughs> i feel like when he does that he can reflect and go back to his video package where he we meet we meet sharon right he makes it onto our scene the scene and he's like I'm a feminist. You know this. I've been <laughs> women's studies. That's my shit. Like that's me. But I've been using it to pick up women. <laughs> like, like what? So you earned every bit of that nickname with just that one sentence, my guy. It's over for you. It's curtains. <laughs> it's okay. curtains. I'm using that five ever now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, David also uh, cur- uh, cursing. Uh, they called David ugly. He was called ugly when he was growing up. I no, poor David's cute. I thought mm-hmm. it was Bryce who said he got called ugly. A lot of I'm sorry, I'm sorry, ugly. I'm sorry, Bryce. I'm sorry, I oh, meant Bryce. I yeah, Bryce. see, I felt he looks really... like a, he looks more like a David to me. I can I see that. See, I can yeah. see it honestly. Yeah. Um, I like felt for him, and then I was like flashing back to when I basically called him ugly. Yeah, and <laughs> I was like, oh, so he's still getting bullied. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, I just. I don't think this workshop is going to really change the fans. And I I don't think Bryce is going to get uh, a lot of, of positive attention yeah. out of this uh, well, experience. He did say that after he leaves the show, he's going to implement the the Lana rules onto his boat parties. So that lasted four and a half days. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. no, that's way too Maximum. generous. It was four and a half hours before he was trying to. <laughs> I'm to kidding. Break rules. Yeah. It did make it. it did make me emotional. All of these people, like I really did. Yeah. Um. I. I. Yeah. I was hurt. It's, I. I get. I get it. And then I didn't get to grow up into somebody as hot as any of these people. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Like when you see like someone like Madison writing the word fat on her body, and you're you're just like, like, okay, really? This person is getting called like okay, cool. Then what am I? Like, this is horrific. I know it was like I grew into my nose, but I never got skinnier. Thanks, grade eight bully. Have a great night. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
It's the ultimate lesson of too hot to handle behind every falafel boy and girl out there was uh, some some piece of pain that caused them to seek out the only thing that uh, could make them whole again yeah. is having meaningless sex with people. Every every falafel boy or girl initially as an origin as, story as a lone chickpea. Yes, and it is with a <laughs> lot you. of struggle. That sometimes this chickpea becomes a falafel I just, boy. I knew that that's what you were going to say. Like, I knew you were going to say they started as chickpea. I mean, where else was I going to go with that? I, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, that's the thing, right? It's like, okay, so so to like, you know, pretend that this is a very hard hitting moment in, in a show that should have that for a second. Yeah, these are all a lot of douchey folk that ended up under one roof. And I do think some of them are leaving this kind of you know, realizing that they were high on their own supply for many moons. Mm -hmm. You know, Corey is someone who left me like, I'm just going to go back to smashing birds and that's my life now. It's like, okay, Corey, forget you. In but then, fairness, he missed a lot of lessons. He did. He did miss a lot of lessons. He came in on chapter seven, didn't work for him. He moved on. Yeah, this um, would have been his only workshop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then like everyone else has been going through a lot. And like, that's the thing for me is that, you know, we're talking about well, what did Kells learn? It's like, we got to remember they all came in here known as some of the worst people on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. As the biggest players, as the serial swipers, I'm doing whatever, you know, I'm picking up pipe, I'm laying pipe. Like, it's just that kind of story. <laughs> and now they're in the situation where they've learned from their mistakes and hopefully, not guaranteed, but hopefully they move on from this. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. They they're leaving still, you know, some of the worst people, but they're all $7500 richer. So, who's winning now? Before yeah. tax. Okay. Okay, yeah. I have a qu I have a question about the tax. Yeah. Sorry, Robert. Um Francesca doesn't have to pay that, right? So I th I think it's like when like if you went to Vegas and yeah. won a ton of money, yeah. that was like a taxable amount. They would still want the money, but you could like get a lawyer in Canada to get that money back. And so that I think is you would I have to get a lawyer to get that back. Mm -hmm. but, okay. But also Nation maybe they me. maybe they sign that away in their contract that they will pay the taxes. Kirsten, can we revisit Great call. Uh, a question that you talked about uh, in the podcast with Puya and Ali the other night of the Mount Rushmore of Too Hot to Handle? I think we should revisit this now that we've seen the entire series. Okay. Okay. In the lobby of the Netflix building, uh, <laughs> if people were allowed in there, uh, and they were going to put up the Mount Rushmore of this is our new hit show, number one show on Netflix, Too Hot to Handle. Who are the four faces of Too Hot to Handle? Okay. Well, obviously, Francesca's there. Yes. A hundred percent. Um, I don't like who I feel like, Nicole, not Nicole. I feel like Chloe, obviously. Yeah. I would say, I would argue that. Like, I would say Chloe and, and Francesca. And then, hmm. Well, it's definitely. Do you not... have to go Harry? I, I feel like Harry had like. A lot happen, but I feel like he's mm -hmm. already kind of captured with like Francesca. So we could get away with not having him, but we could also have him. But in I, seven weeks, yeah. What guy would you remember the most? David, because he's the only one I followed on Instagram. I feel like it's Harry <laughs> is the only uh, one I'm gonna remember. Here's my thing. I only followed Nicole. I, I think it's the two couples. I think it's the two couples. I, yeah. I don't think that Chloe makes the uh, Mount Rushmore. No, but I I want Chloe there though. I know, but then who are you going to bump? I mean, that they let's bump Harry. Let's have they, they told you. They told you when the, in the order they had people stand up that it's, it's Harry and Francesca. They were the stars of the show, and then Rhonda and Sharon stand up. I think we can cut Harry and put. Chloe in. I think we're gonna forget Sharon. I think moving forward in six months, if we got on a call and we were reminiscing about this very podcast, we would refer to Sharon as either woodpecker guy, um, air freshener can guy, air or freshener. something of the sort. I thought yeah. Pels was or air freshener. No, 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 no. That was all Sharon. He's the lion. Yeah. 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 Kels yeah. is an alpha, he is a lion, he is a true leader, and he is the accountant. Yes, yes. And, and the love of my life. I feel like okay. Kels is the person who would send a photo and he doesn't feel the need to have something there to measure against. Whereas Sharon <laughs> is like, what's the biggest thing that is comparable that I'm going to include oh, in this photo? No. That's my personal theory about these men. <laughs> I don't 
her now. <laughs> oh no! Uh, Someone asked if this is remotely like Survivor. No. Not a chance. Which thing? Wow, Which it's like part? the opposite end. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know if you guys have been following this. Uh, the Too Hot to Handle stars have a uh, hit cameo. So uh, what? Yes, the Too Hot to Handle stars are on cameo. Don't look it up yet. Don't look it up yet. Let me ask you guys some questions. Would never. Okay? I've never right. been on Cameo.com. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so who? Do you think of uh, is the most expensive person of, of, of let's start with of the guys uh, that is on cameo of the guys on cameo and I'll, I'll tell you who's on there okay, okay. Yes. all right uh, that it is between Sharon uh, Jesus Bryce uh, Corey and David who's the most expensive guy. To get a cameo from Jesus, Jesus, yeah, Matt. for sure, because he's already like been on other shows. Yeah. I'm going David. Yeah, Haley is right. It's David, seventy five dollars oh. for a cameo from David. Uh, 70, Sharon, I'm sorry, seventy five. Seventy five dollars. Sharon is the steal at uh, twenty five dollars. As is Corey. Corey, you can get a uh, a cameo. Corey from is Corey. too expensive. <laughs> yeah. you just, like I'd pay. 250. No, 250. Corey, Corey can pay me if he wants to send <laughs> yeah, you exactly. Um, okay. I'm sorry, so you said 75. That's correct. US dollars. Have you checked out what the content is on one of these, Rob? Like, what is David giving us? Do you get well, a you know what? I think that I think I'm more interested to know what is Bryce giving us. Uh, on, over okay, on yes, Cam, yeah. okay. I probably, okay. I, you know, original songs. How many probably. doll hairs is he? Uh, he is uh thirty five dollars for a cameo from Bryce. Here's one of him at the piano. Okay. Oh no. Beautiful, beautiful. He doesn't really do anything up tempo. Uh, it's bad he, music. He it's only Depression rock. He only mm -hmm. knows minor chords because he was bullied as a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, and then uh, in the women's division. Okay, so that uh, Franny is not on okay. cameo. Why she yeah. is missing some opportunities for money. Yes. Oh no, she's not missing any opportunities for money. She's uh, just that uh, it costs a lot more than seventy five dollars to get a message from her. Um, okay. So, uh, of the in the women's division, uh, it's between Madison. You get a cameo from Madison, Haley, uh, Chloe, Lydia, and Nicole. Uh, Chloe. I would yeah. hope Chloe. I, I no. Chloe. I I would feel like Lydia would make hers more expensive, even though it should be Chloe. Chloe is seventy dollars. Uh, that's what? great. Lydia is actually the second most expensive. is four is forty dollars. Oh my god! Um, I, I mean, who wants a cameo from Madison? What does Madison even I, tell you? I would love to hear what she has to say. What actually. is hers? How much is hers, Rob? Hers is uh, thirty dollars for a cameo the, oh from god, Madison. Uh, here she is. Here's a. Here's I think I think her one like demo uh, cameo. Here it is. Hey David, it's Madison from Too Hot to Handle. Um, you asked for my worst or my best sad joke, so let's see. Um, what kind of drink can be bitter or sweet? Reality. <laughs> Thanks for your support. There you go. I hated that. Well, I was, even I was for a refund. Can, can we go back in time to when we hadn't heard that? <laughs> Has she heard of a joke before? <laughs> yeah. Hey, so but I feel like Haley, if you had said that same joke, I would have had a chuckle. But it doesn't mm -hmm. even make sense. It's not yeah, a good joke. No, it's, yeah. oh, it's sorry. reality. Gee. Get it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I apologize. Also, Francesca is on oh. uh, Cameo for $100. Her and there Harry are $100 each. Are value. they a couple Cameo? No, because they're separate. They're, oh. they're does, in the same place. What oh. does Francesca have to say? Uh, note. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's what it's you're you're so much paying for what she has to say. Uh here's a here's a little bit for uh of a cameo from Francesca. Hey Phil, I just wanted to wish you a very happy birthday. I know it sucks that you're turning 17 and it's corny. Oh, come on, 17-year-old kid. Come on, kid. That uh. should be illegal. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I well, no enough. This is so bad. Oh my no, god. No, seventeen year olds should be Shut watching down. that show. No, <laughs> well, yeah, I think somebody, seventeen is the rating. Somebody yeah. tweeted at me that their ten year old watched this show, and mm-hmm. I said, "I'm sorry, what? Ten year olds are watching this show?" And she said, "Yeah, they watched it before I did." And then when I was like, "Whoa, you watched this?" They were like, "It's already done." Already done. <laughs> That's I, you know what? To be fair to that child, I probably watch really terrible television at that age as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but you didn't parents- tell your parents about it. No, no, I didn't. You're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my theory on why David and Chloe were up there on the money, I think, you know, as the two English British people coming through, they've seen that Love Island money. They know that Love Island coin. So I think they were like. I can get that kind of money. I was on a show that was a reality-based show, romance-based. So I think that's where they were like, they got the mentality, whereas the Americans were a little bit behind on that. They're like, no, yeah. I don't think I can get anything. I Well, I feel like Kells would be smart and have his uh, like a lower price point because he knows he'll get more cameos. Yes, the accountant. The yeah. account. He's, too, he's too good for it. Yeah, that's how he's, Kells does it. He's there's no yeah. no Kells has like started a clothing line since is what he's doing. So like he he is not above any of that. They yeah. all started a clothing line. Yeah. Uh, no, you, there's Ronda a bathing suit jewelry line. line. There's how an dare underwear you. line. There's a jewelry line. They all have lines, <laughs> but yeah. not the kind you're thinking. Not tan lines. I mean, they yeah. probably yeah. have. That's uh, not the line yeah. I was thinking, but that's probably. <laughs> I mean, they Paper. don't have those ones, but they do have what Haley was talking about. Yeah. Haley, at one point they referred to this as the season one finale of Too Hot to Handle. Are you on board for season two? And how do we need to mix it up? How are we going to surprise people? This is like the Joe Millionaire problem of how do you do this again? I pray to God (laughs) there is a season two because this was the greatest week of my quarantine. Although I have depression and I've had a bad quarantine, but that's different. Different Um, story. Anyway, uh, I think it could be okay because just look at X on the beach in the UK, which is also a brilliant show way trashier, but brilliant. Eventually they know what's going on. So I think that bringing people in and them knowing what it is, wouldn't have that much of a detriment to the whole thing. Also, they could do what X on the beach US did and bring them to a ski lodge and trick them and pretend it's a completely different show. When really it's the same show too Hmm. cold to handle too cold to handle. Kirsten, do you have any thoughts on what they need to do for season two? Um, they need to bring it back immediately uh, so that Haley and I can just cover it together next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're being squeezed out. Yeah. yeah you're, we're, yo, we're, you guys are welcome. Yeah, but you're like, welcome. But like, I've been doing this for the better part of a decade. Yeah, like it's, talking about shit reality is, shows like, on your is, network. Yeah. Raw. This is like, Haley's brand that I've just truly just moved into her territory Mm -hmm. as the worst version of her i'm like what show is Haley too busy to cover because i'll jump on that i'm not busy yeah Mm -hmm. now you're busy i am not busy anymore netflix if you want to come out with other shows please please do it the thing is is like uh love is blind filmed like over a year ago Mm -hmm. and just dropped and then this show filmed like a year ago and just dropped so i feel like they do have quite a bit more in the can that they can can do for us. I I don't know if it'll be too hot to handle until after uh you know this whole yeah. self oh, you know what? is over, Here, but they have more for us. Yeah, here's season two of Too Hot to Handle. They get all of these uh thirsty people puya and they get the as soon as quarantine is over, they just get them to they get them to the island. The prize the prize pool is uh is thirty dollars. Uh and <laughs> And let's see, let's see how long they could uh, go. Actually, no, you can make the prize pool like a million dollars. There won't be any money left at the end. Yeah, I think so too. I think after this moment, after this real life test that they've been given, you mm-hmm. know, the way they're going to see it, there's not going to be anything left over. I do think that there's a couple interesting ways, Rob, that I think they could work into changing it up a little bit. I think. Obviously, it was a little confusing because initially they weren't announcing who has violated the rules, who's breached the rules. Yeah. Then they could investigate, and then by the end they were just telling them. That was yeah. They they had to work that out. That that was yeah. uh, that was a uh, a miss. They need to sort that out. And then I also think obviously everyone getting money isn't the way to go about it. But also the fact that um the people who breached all the rules as much as they did like. 
Francesca, yeah, they Francesca and Harry brought back the money, but they also spent all of it to begin with, and they found each other. I think either some sort of maybe not just Lana deciding someone hasn't done enough to leave. Maybe at some point, give me a little drama. Make these people and the relationships they're having matter. Make them decide to kick someone out for not having done enough. I would have loved to see the accountant and Francesca and Harry all butt heads over like who's going to mm -hmm. leave and why. What that would, would also good. be fun, like I know they had just a few people actually get eliminated over this this season. I think it would be really fun for there to be like an actual mechanism for people to, you know, go home. Uh, obviously, they're never going to shoot this live, so it can never be a public vote like it would be on, on Love Island. But maybe if they made the rest of the people vote out one person. So, like, can you imagine if this group had gotten to vote Francesca out? That would have been gold. Like, that mm -hmm. would have been incredible. Like, they're like, you know what? She's broken the rules so many times. She's lost us all this money. We're going to vote her out. And then maybe because of that, they lose the opportunity to get the money back that she had lost or something along those lines, I think could be fun. I thought there was definitely going to be a voting element somewhere along the way and we didn't get it. Yeah. I thought maybe when they were trying to like play us with what the ending was going to be with the money, I thought maybe they like everyone was going to vote for who deserved the money. And then like mm -hmm. top three who got votes, like, they got the yeah. money or something like that. I thought yeah. maybe maybe I'm just broken things to Survivor and Big Brother, but I thought there was going to be a voting element somewhere along the way and we didn't get yeah. it. Maybe we could sort of combine the circle where there's like some sort of like, okay, rank the people that are here because then you would have say like, oh, this person is costing us money, but I also want to hook up with her. So <laughs> yeah. I don't want her yes. to go home. Yes, uh, yes. But it's like, oh, this person is like a real stick in the mud and they're no fun. So that she's the like, uh, like basically like the, ha the Haley that sucks would have gotten rated the lowest and then ultimately is the person that goes home. Yeah. yeah, and I love that like, idea. Something like that also would help maybe with marking time a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the time like, was wonky here. Because it's like, yeah. apparently that was four weeks of their lives, but it really feels like it was four hours of mm -hmm. their lives. Uh, it, it just doesn't feel like right. It, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. They're also apparently going to do some sort of uh, reunion episode. Better be better than a Tiger King reunion. I mean, Please. it would be hard for it to be worse, right? Mm -hmm. That was yeah. Good. But which are, oh, they did a good Love Is Blind reunion. Yeah, that but was fun. but was that pre quarantine? That was pre quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this one would be on uh, the old Zoom call. Yeah, yeah. Like the Zoom ones me. have some workshopping to do on I'm, a global scale. Honestly, I'm just very concerned what these people will accidentally do on camera on a Zoom call. Yeah, gotta make all of them put on the virtual background. I'm telling you, that's the move. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we do oh, that yeah. yard? Puya just wants <laughs> to put on virtual backgrounds, but he can't right now. And I'm I've so mastered relieved. it. I've, Rob, I've mastered it. It's a good time. Yeah, uh, where you put on a virtual background on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I've never done that. Yeah, I've got a couple. I've got the office. I put on videos in the background. It's been it's been a good time. A Do friend of mine did it. For that? No, no, it, it, it just works with your camera. Virtually. So if you have Damn. a if you have a good enough camera, it actually does a pretty solid job of of uh, filling things in. And if you have a fairly blank wall, I had a friend <laughs> who did a really great one where she recorded a video of herself, like popping in, and then so when she was sitting there, she also just like popped in. It was it was like magical. Mm -hmm. He really likes um, using my Big Brother Canada 6 video because he is uh, a psychotic human. Great video. <laughs> it bothers Kirsten, I'll tell you that. Well, because you're just talking to Puya and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I'm there in a spinning throne. What a throwback. Kirsten, uh, is there anything else that you would like to add about this week of covering uh, the Too Hot to Handle? I, I just want to thank everybody for their patience in dealing with the hot mess that was the coverage for this podcast yeah. and to uh thank you for for letting me uh jump on board for uh, this. i enjoyed it so much i enjoyed the show i love the podcast this was such a fun week oh uh do we want to talk about instagram followers sure who do you think has the least instagram followers after the the show i, I mean are we including like the uh the grenades yeah absolutely madison yeah Corey. No, it it is Madison. Madison only okay. has one hundred and six k as of this afternoon. And it's still pretty good. Yeah, one hundred six. Yeah, nothing. that's the lowest. Yeah. Corey. A lot of these people went in with like more than twenty thousand or over a hundred thousand. Like um, mm -hmm. Matthew, hey, Harry, and Francesca all went in with over a hundred k. Matthew didn't make a huge. 
increase. He only has 358k. Who's Matthew? Oh, Matt Jesus. Okay. I was also confused. I, I mean, I, I've got to admit, I wrote it down as Matthew, and I was like, wait a second, who's Matthew? And I was like, all right, Matt Jesus. Um, Kells is at 290. Yep. Uh, Nicole at 327. Haley, 283. Uh, Rhonda, 550. Yeah, Rhonda, Chloe, Harry, and Francesca are the only ones over 500,000. Yep. Uh, Liv H says, uh, more trash coverage. I never watched the show, but the podcasts were amazing. Actually, let me see if uh, Scott had some questions. Why for don't us. you check out the Listen to Your Heart podcast over on this network here by also trash TV show? You don't need to watch it. Okay. Uh, let's, let's bring in some questions that Scott pulled. Okay. Uh, this is from Nice to Meet You. Hey, guys, love the pod. Can you please weigh in on the debate on whether the graphics at the beginning of Too Hot to Handle depict a melting candle or something else? Great job once again. Yeah, I mean, uh, Puya and I talked about this uh, real quick. I, I thought it was uh, somebody sweating. Yeah. Uh, Kirsten, did you think that that was like melting candle wax? I will admit that this never stood out to me. Oh, yeah. um, oh, oh, can I make yeah, an observation I that I don't know I, I'm telling about. you, they said they told the name of this show was The Retreat up until somebody said, I don't know what that means. They got to change the name that they refer to the show as The Retreat constantly. Well, no, yeah. I, I, I don't think that's necessarily true because on Love Island, they talk about the villa all the time. Mm hmm. But the villa oh. makes sense. Yeah, the like, name makes no too hot to handle makes no sense. Like, well, as a name. if you were out here looking for this show to make sense i don't know where you've been all week because <laughs> yeah. it doesn't make sense okay and that's fine we're just along for the ride mm -hmm. Al alana for the ride all right alana for the um, ride. let's uh take this question this is from emily uh did we discuss the fact that harry and fran are still dating uh because uh peep is instagram and they have matching tattoos also oh. yes they got lightning bolt tattoos together why lightning bolts um Harry Potter because fans? they're not very original <laughs> and they probably walked into a tattoo shop and said that one and then mm -hmm. got it together because they we felt have like they were lightning posts yeah they felt like they were lightning posts in the house like everyone was mad at them all the time mm -hmm. okay uh all right uh there's a question from Porgy it says uh how come no one went for the Irish chick uh she has a name her name is Nicole Porgy yeah, no one deserved her yeah come on Porgy and yeah, none of them are good enough for her <laughs> yeah, yeah there you go fine she didn't seem to be interested in any of the guys either though would you be yeah. i yeah i think that she like possibly was maybe kind of with matt jesus at the start but we just weren't shown it because it didn't make mm -hmm. sense with matt leaving mm -hmm. i don't know because after as soon as he was gone she did become a little bit more of a presence mm -hmm. um but she's the one who's allegedly dating bryce long distance so allegedly oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm traumatized by that. Like Haley texted that to me right before this podcast and I'm still reeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, she, that they know that uh, all the couples get the publicity. That's not real. Uh, Muhammad wants to know, was this really filmed during a month? It felt like a week. They got really tan. So yeah. maybe. Do you think that they, it really was a week and they said it was a month? I could see it being two and a half. Like I know in Bachelor in Paradise, uh, yeah. they film over about three weeks, um, and then they it airs over about six. Yeah, uh, and they but, just refer to each like three day span as mm -hmm. a week. And I can yeah. see that happening here, but it's hard I, because they don't have that differentiation of like a rose ceremony that makes it like you know that it yeah. is. Mm -hmm. so I could see end. them. Uh, really playing with the time and say like maybe this was like ten days like the budget wise like a month is a long time to film this show and also that's like well anybody could go without sex for ten days but <laughs> they're gonna be have to go for like they try to make it sound longer. I uh, yeah I could see that just based on how none of the timing made any sense and yeah, I mean so weird the I and like just thinking about it like. Thinking that, okay, these people, they couldn't have any gratification for four weeks. That's a long time. Like, okay. But if they had been like, okay, guys, you have to go without for 10 whole days, I would have turned off the TV and been like, these guys <laughs> right. suck. I, I can't stand yeah. any of them. Yeah, it makes so, a lot of sense when you put it that way. Like, yeah. cause, okay, right? Like, I feel like if the show comes up and it's like, okay, these guys are going to go 10 whole days without gratification. And then it's just like a single person in quarantine. Like, Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ten yeah. days. <laughs> okay. Uh, Megan says, uh, "Are under boob bikinis in this season?" You, you do, right. you Megan. Yeah. Thong bikinis are in, and under boob bikinis are in. There is not going to be a lot of clothes on the beach this summer. Yeah. If there is one, because yeah. there probably won't be people there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else is in this season? Uh, sweatpants and t-shirts. That's uh, right. Also, also yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, nice to meet you, Francesca and Harry's Instagram followers. Has Netflix ruined the Instagram model ecosystem? I think I think this is more or less the same. <laughs> yeah, it's to be expected. Um, look, uh, that it, it, in terms of the, like the cash prize, I think might be in uh, the Insta Spawn Con after the show, and not the prize that you get uh, in episode eight, Haley. I completely agree. Um, I don't ugh, like. Ugh, I'm not comprehending totally. Yeah. Because All I right. think because I've been in the Bachelor Nation for so long where it's like those people just go on to to be influencers. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do one more question, Scott. Uh, this is from Marcelo Sperano. Which Netflix reality show is a better one and which uh, was the most successful? The Circle, Love is Blind, or Too Hot to Handle? It seems like and uh, that uh, Kirsten... I thought that Love is Blind had like the biggest uh, like wide stream appeal. Uh, that Am I off on that? No, I think that you're right. But I also think that Love is Blind has had just more time for people time. to like glom onto it. Yeah. I think give us a little bit more time and Too Hot to Handle is going to top the charts. I think it's uh, possibly the greatest show I've ever watched in my life. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Haley Puya, any other thoughts? I have I, one question that yeah. we didn't talk about, and I want to get everyone's takes on it. So at one point, Harry described his relationship with Francesca as perfect, like pineapples on a pizza. And I just want to know, I don't want to open the debate maybe, but is this, how are we feeling about this? Is that not right. one of the most contentious things to it's, say? Well, that's exactly why it's an apt comparison because much like pineapple on pizza, Harry and Francesca are an acquired taste. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as, as the leading snack chat ep expert on this podcast, I am a big fan of pineapple on pizza. Hell yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of pineapple on any food. Whoa. <laughs> I like she gets into the camera. Any, any the food I want pineapple on. It is my favorite fruit. I want yeah. it on everything. Do you, do you know what's a low-key delicious pizza? Pineapple and black olives. Whoa. I can't do olives. Olives are not my personal mm -hmm. jam. But here's the thing about pineapple on pizza haters. <laughs> Kirsten, I respect your opinion. If yeah. you want black olive on a pizza, amazing. If we were to get a pizza together, guess what? You we take them off. half black olive and half just pineapple and we'd be perfectly happy together yeah. and you know what one day we will order that pizza we together. Will one, order day. Pizza together. <laughs> one day yeah. and my wife feels exactly the same about pineapple on pizza as she does about francesca <laughs> <laughs> she loves it and yeah. strawberries as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kirsten. Uh, this, uh, take. <laughs> I, I was asked about this earlier today. Uh, which person from Too Hot to Handle would you like to have in your quarantine house? Why hasn't the quarantine house <laughs> meme come to the Too Hot to Handle? Yeah. I, I am going to make this meme after this part. Let me just write this yeah. down really quick so that I don't forget. Yeah. Too <laughs> 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 so Rob, what was your answer? I, I abstained from answering. <laughs> of course, I don't think I'm allowed to be in a in a quarantine house with. I with obviously, any of these people. I obviously want Nicole and Kells in my quarantine house. I think mm -hmm. I made that very clear. I I just I feel like there's a few different ways to play this question. Yeah, Is it who you would be friends with and you want to hang out with, or who's going to help you pass the time mm -hmm. in quarantine. And uh, I'm going to need to think on this. I'm going to make this quarantine house meme. So everyone, uh, yeah. Peep and also Twitter and uh, too, check that out. Kirsten are too hot to handle rules in place. Are you charged money for transgressions? Is there Lana also in the house? No, that's psychotic. Okay. Well, it would make the game challenging. <laughs> yeah. But why is it a game? You're already in quarantine. There's a global pandemic. Why are we making <laughs> life harder? That's a meme. <laughs> yeah. No so rude.
Yeah. Person oh, okay. really taking this quarantine and quality time seriously. I'm, th- I'm thinking about this, and I, you know what? Just just wait, guys. I'm. <laughs> this is going to be great. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk about what else is coming up here on uh, RHAP and Robin's website.com. Uh, Haley, tell us about uh, Listen to Your Heart. Uh, that I don't know a lot about this. What is the theme? Uh, like, how is this different from regular Bachelor? Okay, so it actually feels more like Bachelor in Paradise, but it it does take place in California, and it's all musicians. I thought it was going to be awful, and the only reason I was going to watch it is because I truly and deeply have nothing better to do. Mm -hmm. But I've been having a great time watching it, and it makes me sing songs to Ethan, which he deeply hates. But I've, it's a fun show where people sing, hot people sing to each other. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got nothing else going on on Mondays at 8 p.m. So just watch it, and then listen to our, our podcast. Okay, yeah, listen to the podcast. Listen or to your heart. Yes, don't watch it, but then still listen to our podcast. Yeah. Yes, that's uh, what I've been doing, and it's still very enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. Uh, listen to your heart or uh, Mass Singer. Uh, who ha- who has the the better uh, the better music selection? Mass Singer. Matt Singer. Okay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Not All by right. much, depending on who's on that stage, though. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, challenge Total Madness. Uh, check out what Allie and Brian have to say about the latest season of the challenge. Uh, Mass Singer, season three, episode 13. But yeah, how close are we to the finale of Mass Singer? <laughs> So we found out last week, about two weeks ago, that they added two recap episodes to extend the season to 18 episodes. And then we had one of them last week. There was a public outcry against yeah. the recap episode. They removed the other one. So I believe. Oh, there was a backlash and they responded yeah. to the backlash. They removed the road to the finals uh, episode, which was going to cover how we got to the finals, which thankfully that's gone. So wow. we should be done in four episodes. So four weeks. Okay. Who's yeah, the right. banana? The banana was spoiler alert for those of you who made it this far. Brett Michaels. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which too hot to handle contestant, Kirsten, is most likely to make it to Mass Singer season four? I mean, Francesca has the followers. Francesca, and what will she be, Puya? Ooh, she will be the lipstick. Lipstick. I mean, okay. I would have thought, you know, she already drew the representation of herself. Wouldn't she be a cat? We already have Kitty this season. She can't be yeah. at least we need a couple of seasons been in between. So okay. the lipstick it is. Okay. I think she'll be the 2020 glasses. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Uh Rick Devins, uh talk to Loco Doco uh as he's uh chronicling his quest to understand esports. Uh and then also uh I believe he has an, another episode up uh in his chron- in his uh, investigative report on esports on the latest news AF. Danny Tyson and myself talked about what was going on in everybody else's quarantine houses and how uh, families are reporting uh, more quality time uh, than ever before. Uh, check out Dirty Harry with Shannon Gus uh, over on Australian uh, Survivor All Stars uh, Deep Dive. Uh, then Matt Ligori has power rankings with Gavin and Victoria as well. And then oh Shane Power, what a what a chat we had with uh, with Shane Powers the other day. And uh, I heard from Denise Stapley, who got to check out that interview uh, with uh, Shane Powers the other day. Uh, lots of fun uh, catching up with Shane. Uh, Taryn talked to Ovi on the latest round of Taryn Survivor update as well. And then uh, what's this? Oh, it's Aaron Jackson on the B&B. Uh, check that out with Mike and Liana playing some games. Talked to Rick Devins on Thursday. Had a fun chat with uh, with uh, Rick Devins, who I found out has done over 700 cameos, Kirsten. Wow, that's cleaning up. Yeah, impressive. Very impressive. Good for him. Uh, then check out Why Blank Lost uh, with David and Jessica this weekend. Be on the lookout for that. And then... Uh, oh, it's Tess uh, checking in with uh, Shannon Gus to talk about the latest week of Survivor winners at war. And then Aris Bushkowskis, uh talked to him this afternoon. First of three podcasts in a row that I've done. I think I've been podcasting for about uh, seven and a half of the last eight hours oh straight. Uh, Antonio Mazzaro coming up tomorrow on This Week in 
Survivor, Josh Wiggler in the Wiggle Room as well. You know what's coming up during the week. Uh, of course, uh, the patrons of Robin's Podcast make this all possible. Thanks again to all of our new patrons here in the month of April who came on board. We've been contributing uh, all of those new patron contributions to directrelief.org to get PPE for doctors and nurses on the front lines of the battle against the coronavirus. And then I am matching those contributions. And uh, we have uh, put together over eight thousand uh, dollars by way of these uh new patron contributions not to mention we also started a gofundme as well uh which uh the last i looked at that uh was over eighty five hundred dollars i can tell you uh 8840 uh in that fund. uh that is enough for francesca and harry to uh have some fun and still have money <laughs> left over for <laughs> snacks <laughs> Okay. Now that's I mean, this was, we, now we've this raised, is how I, I will be tracking money person, forever. We've we've raised more money than Sharon and Rhonda cost in the fantasy suite. Boom. And truly something to be admired. That it's is like definitely a, a good way to track money. Mm -hmm. I only have one undercover blowsy left in, to pay on my student loans. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> I'm older than you, Kirsten. Please remember. Yes. Not by much. <laughs> yes. Uh, but by the way, uh, Kirsten, I, I was so happy or I was just so sad when you guys uh, were able to define when Chloe was looking for a geezer. Uh, I was like, hey, all right. Uh, that it may be me that I was feeling better about myself uh, until I found out her definition. Yeah, she she wants a geezer. Geezer. <laughs> Because if you're looking for a geezer with good chat, uh, I'm your guy. And then I found out that she's looking for something totally different. <laughs> I mean, don't you already have Nicole? Leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, thanks so much, Scott St. Pierre. Uh, behind the scenes, of course. Uh, Haley, where can people uh, see more from you? You can find me all over the internet, like you mentioned uh, slightly earlier, Rob. Uh, you can catch me on the Listen to Your Heart uh, Bachelor franchise wrap up. Um, much better show, Top Chef wrap up. Uh, do watch Top Chef; it is a great show. You mm -hmm. can find me on Twitter and Instagram at H Strong underscore. I know a lot of you are cooking for the first time while you're in quarantine, so if you have any cool questions about food of any sort feel free to DM me or tweet me, Instagram me, whatever. Uh, and you can check out my blog, strongtakes.ca. Okay. Puya. Yes. You can find me on all major platforms at Puyaism. Mass singer rap of going on for another month. That's going to be a good time. Shout out to Rob for podcasting today. The exact same length as this show went <laughs> for her whole season. Yeah. And, you know, as the great Ross Geller once said, no more falafel for you. We're done. No okay. more falafel boys and girls. Okay. okay. All right. And Kirsten, uh, it's the end of a journey for you here covering uh, the entire season of Too Hot to Handle. How do you feel? I mean, I just... What, what heart, did you learn? My you tell heart, us about your growth journey. <laughs> my heart feels full. I think I have uh, not grown, but regressed. Uh, <laughs> I definitely have lost IQ points, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and so if people are interested in continuing this journey with me through life, uh, they can find me on all social media at Kirsten said what uh, that I mean, people are asking about PayPal. That's my PayPal, too. Just saying. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> you can catch me. Um, I did season one, episode six of Glee with Matt Ligorian and Amon on the choir room, which just dropped this week. Mm -hmm. This weekend, I will be talking with Matt Ligorian and Brian Scally about the most recent episode of The Challenge over on the Dom and Colin Network. And uh, Mary Kwiatkowski and I are still covering Riverdale over on Kowski Cast, Cow with a K. And we will have a very special episode of Kowski cast with Mike what? Bloom coming up what? very soon. Wow. Yeah, I got I got Josh Wiggler and now we brought in Mike Bloom. So we and just you love... got Puya. Yeah, but you watch Riverdale. Oh, so it's true. like, like we're bringing in people who have never watched the show to watch a random episode mm -hmm. so that we can break it down. So we broke down season two, episode five with Josh Wiggler. Like, I don't know. It feels like seven years ago, but I know it wasn't that long. And then we are breaking down season three, episode two with Mike Bloom, which has the most iconic line of all time, uh, where if you dropped out of middle school to sell drugs to support your family, then you have never known the trials and tribulations of high school football. So we're going to be exploring that this week. 
Uh, I, I still say the most iconic line of all time was <laughs> when Ali Lasher said that, that I forget which guy it was, was not uh, a garbage bag, but was an online trash can. <laughs> That was, that was Harry. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, thank you guys uh, so much. Uh, thanks so much, Scott. Safe here behind the scenes. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.